Hi, these are the trigonometry lectures for educator.com. And today we're going to look at some word problems and some applications of triangle trigonometry. We're going to be using all the major formulas that we've learned in the previous lectures, so I hope you remember those very well. Uh, the master formula which works for right triangles is Sokotoa. You can remember that as some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And remember, that only works in a right triangle. If you have an angle theta, that relates the sine, cosine, and tangent of theta to the hypotenuse, the opposite, the side opposite theta, and the side adjacent to theta. So you interpret that as the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. The law of sines works in any triangle, and let me draw a generic triangle here. It doesn't have to be a right triangle for the law of sines to work. So A, B, and C. Generally, you'd label triangles with cap, label the angles with capital letters, and label the sides with lowercase letters uh, opposite the corner with the same letter. So that makes this A, this is B, and this is C. And the law of sines says that sine of capital A over lowercase a is equal to sine of capital B over lowercase c over lowercase b, and that's equal to sine of capital C over lowercase c. So that's the law of sines. Law of cosines also works in any triangle. So let me remind you what that one is. We had a whole lecture on it earlier, but just to remind you quickly, it says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of capital C. So that's useful when you know all three sides. You can figure out an angle very quickly using the law of cosines. Or if you know two sides and the angle in between them, you can figure out that third side using the law of cosines. Um, remember, law of cosines works in any triangle. doesn't have to be a right triangle. It still works in right triangles. Of course, in right triangles, if C is the right angle, then cosine of C is 0. So the law of cosines just boils down to the Pythagorean formula. So you can think of the law of cosines as kind of a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem to any triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle anymore. Finally, Heron's formula. Heron's formula tells you the area of a triangle when you know the lengths of the three sides. So the Heron says that the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. Now the a, b, and c are the lengths of the sides, so you're supposed to know what those are before you go into Heron's formula. This s I need to explain is the semi-perimeter. So you add a, b, and c, you get the perimeter of the triangle, and then you divide by 2 to get the semi-perimeter. So that tells you what the S is, and then you can drop that into Heron's formula and find the area of the triangle. So we'll be using all of those, and sometimes it's a little tricky to interpret the words of a problem and figure out which formula you use. The, the real crucial step there is as soon as you get the problem, you want to draw a picture, uh, draw a picture of the triangle involved, and then see which formula works. So let's try that out on a few examples, and you'll get the hang of it. So the first example here is a telephone pole that casts a shadow 20 feet long. And we're told the sun's rays make a 60 degree angle with the ground. And we're asked, how tall is the pole? So let me draw that. Here's the telephone pole. And we know it casts a shadow. And we know that that shadow is 20 feet long. That's a right angle. And it, the reason it casts a shadow is because of these rays coming from the sun. So There's the sun casting the shadow. And we want to figure out how tall is the pole. We're told that the sun's rays make a 60 degree angle with the ground. So that means that angle right there is 60 degrees. And we want to solve for the height of the telephone pole. So that's the quantity we want to solve for. That's the angle, or sorry, that's the side opposite 
the angle that we know, and we also are given the side adjacent to the angle we know. So I see opposite and adjacent, and I see a right angle. I'm going to use Sokotoa here. And I know the adjacent angle, I'm looking for, or sorry, the adjacent side, I'm looking for the opposite side. So it seems like I should use the tangent formula here. So tangent of 60 is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, tangent of 60, 60 is one of those common values. That's uh, pi over 3. So I know what the tangent of 60 is. I've got that memorized, and hopefully you do too. It's square root of 3 is the tangent of 60. If you didn't remember that, I at least hope that you remember the sine of 60 and the cosine of 60, and that tangent is sine over cosine. So you can always work out the tangent if you don't remember exactly what the tangent of 60 is. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half, so that simplifies down to square root of 3. So that's what the tangent of 60 is. Now the opposite, I don't know what that is, so I'll just leave that as opposite. But the adjacent side I was given is 20. So I solve this. Opposite is equal to 20 square roots of 3. Since this is an applied problem, I'll convert that into a decimal. So 20 square roots of 3 is approximately 34.6. And the unit of measurement here is feet. So I'll give my answer in terms of feet. And so that tells me that the telephone pole is 34.6 feet tall. So let's recap there. We were given a word problem. I don't know at first exactly what it's talking about. The first thing I do is I draw a picture. So I drew a picture of my telephone pole, drew a picture of the shadow, and then I noticed, well, that's a right triangle, so I can use Sokotoa to solve it. And then I tried to figure out which quantities do I know, which quantities do I not know. Well, I knew the adjacent side, I knew the angle, but I didn't know the opposite side. And so that seemed like it was going to work well with the tangent formula. I plugged in what I knew, I solved it down using the common value that I knew, and I got the answer. So in the next one, we're trying to build a bridge across a lake, but we can't figure out how wide the lake is because we can't just walk across the lake to, to measure it. And so it says that these engineers measure from a point on land that is 280 feet from one end of the bridge, 160 feet from the other. And then the angle between these two lines is 80 degrees. And from that, we're supposed to figure out what the bridge will be, or how long the bridge will be. So lots of words here. It's a little confusing when you first encounter this because there's just so many words here and there's no picture at all. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is to draw a picture. So. I have no idea what shape this lake is really, but I'm just going to draw a picture like that. And then I know that these engineers are trying to build a bridge across it. And so let's say that that's one end of the bridge right there and that's the other end. And they measure from a point on land that is 280 feet from one end of the bridge and 160 feet from the other. And it says the angle between these two lines measures 80 degrees. So now if you look at this, what I have is a triangle. And more than that, I have two sides and the included angle of a triangle. So I have a side angle side situation. And I know that, that's, that that gives me a unique solution as long as my angle is less than 180 degrees, and of course 80 is less than 180 degrees. So I know I have a unique solution. I'm trying to find the length of that third side. Now if you have side angle side and you need the third side, that's definitely the law of cosines. So I'm going to label that third side little c and call this capital C. 
label the other sides A and B. And now the law of cosines The law of cosines is my friend here. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C. We know everything there except for little c. So I'm just going to plug in the quantities that I know and reduce down and solve for little c. So let me plug in C squared. Don't know that yet. Uh, a squared is 160 squared plus B squared is 280 squared minus 2 times 160 times 280 times the cosine of capital C. The angle is 80 degrees. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but I can find that on my calculator. Uh, two, uh, 160 squared is 25600. Zero, zero. Um, 280 squared is 78400. And now 2 times 160 times 280, I worked that out as 89600. And the cosine of 80, I'll do that on my calculator. Remember to put your calculator in degree mode if that's what you're using here. A lot of people have their calculator set in radian mode. And then that gives you strange answers because your calculator would be interpreting that as 80 radians. So it's very important to set your calculator to 80 degrees. And cosine of 80 degrees is 0 0.174. So let's see, 25,600 plus 78,400 is 104,000. 89,600 times 0.174 is 15,559. And so, oh, that, that's approximate, of course. Um, and so if we simplify that, we get 88,441. That's C squared. So I take the square root of that. C is approximately equal to 297.4. And our unit of measurement here is feet. So I give my answer in terms of feet. So let's recap what made that one work. We were given this kind of long paragraph full of words, and it's a little hard to discern what we're supposed to be doing. Um, first thing we see is, OK, we're, it's a lake, so I draw just a random lake. It's a bridge across a lake, so I, I draw a picture. That's really the, the key idea is to draw a picture. So I drew my, my bridge across the lake here. That, that's the bridge right there. And then it says we measure from a point that is 280 feet from one end of the, of the bridge and 160 feet from the other. So I drew that point and I filled in the 160 and the 280. And then it gave me the angle between those two lines, so I filled that in. Now all of a sudden I've got a standard triangle problem. Um, and moreover, I've got a triangle problem where I know two sides and the angle in between them. And what I want to find is the third side of the triangle. So that's definitely a law of cosines problem. So I write down my law of cosines. I fill in all the quantities that I know. Then I simplify down, and I solve for the answer on that. So let's try another example here. This time a farmer measures the fences along the edges of a triangular field as 160, 240, and 300 feet. And then the farmer wants to know what the area of the field is. So just like all the others, I'm going to start out right away by drawing a picture. It's a triangular field. My picture is probably not to scale, and that doesn't really matter. 160, 240, and 380. So I have a triangle, and I want to figure out what the area is. 
Now, if you have three sides of a triangle and you want to find the area, that's pretty much a dead giveaway that you want to use Heron's formula. So let me remind you what Heron's formula is. Heron's, Heron's formula says the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. Now the a, b, and c are just the lengths of the three sides, but this s is the semi-perimeter of the triangle. So that's one half of the perimeter, a plus b plus c. Remember, the perimeter is the distance around if you kind of walk all the way around this triangle. So that's one half of 160 plus 240 plus 300. Uh, 160 plus 200, 240 is 400, plus 300 is 700, one half of that is 350. So S is 350. Now I just drop the S and the three sides into Heron's formula. So that's 350 times 350 minus 160, 350 minus 240. 350 minus 300. So that's 350 times 350 minus 160 is 190. 350 minus 240 is 110. And 350 minus 300 is 50. So I can pull 100 out of that immediately. So this is 100 times the square root of 35 times 19 times 11 times 5. And I'm going to go to my calculator for that. 35 times 19 times 11 times 5 is 36575. And the square root of that is 191 times 100. is 191 rounds to 25. Now this is the area of a field, so the units are square here, and we were talking in terms of feet, so this must be square feet. So let's recap how you approach that problem. First of all, you read the words, and then right away you go to draw a picture. So I see that I have a triangular field. The edges are 160, 240, and 300 feet. Um, once, and it says I'm asked for the area of the field. Now, once you have the three sides and you want the area, there's pretty much no question that you want to use Heron's formula on that because that's a formula that tells you the area based on the three sides very quickly. So you write down Heron's formula. That's got A, B, and C in there. It's also got this S. So S is the semi-perimeter. You figure that out from the three sides. You plug that into Heron's formula, and you plug in the three sides. The A, B, and C are 160, 240, and 300. And then it's just a matter of simplifying down the numbers until you get an answer and figuring out that the units have to be square feet because the problem was asked, the, the original measurements in the problem were in terms of feet, and we're describing an area now, so it must be square feet. So we'll try some more examples later.